This is my pre-calculus course. Today we're going to continue to learn the conics. If you haven't done the homework completely and correctly from last class, do that homework before watching this video. If you haven't already gotten a picture of this information with your phone, go ahead and do that. And a picture of the information at the left. In the previous class, we were given an equation of some conic and asked to graph the, uh, the equation. Well, now we're going to go backwards. We're given a graph and asked to write the equation. And the purpose for this is to familiarize you more and more with the basic forms, uh, the graphing forms of the, of the different equations and and the dimensions of the conics and how to determine the various uh, values that you need to find the uh, key information and graph the conics. So we have a circle obviously and I'm going to write the standard form of the equation of a circle. You should have this in front of you. The pictures that uh, I showed you at the beginning of the class so that is the standard form of the equation of a circle. <clears throat> now the center, if we count out, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it looks like the center is at four, four. So that's HK. So the center is HK, which is uh, four, four. Also, I can see the radius of the circle is 1, 2, because this is obviously the center. We can see that pretty clearly. So R is 2, and we have all the information that we need at this point. And maybe I should write this stuff first. And we can plug the, that information in to the equation. So h is 4 and k is 4 and r is 2 and so now we can simplify you don't have to write all these steps you can really just write the equation immediately if you can if you can understand how to plug in the numbers you don't really have to show any of this you can just plug in everything in the, the last yellow step sometimes in math you have to show your work but other times it's really not necessary so that is the equation of the circle so this is pretty easy circles are generally pretty easy to work with when it comes to the math so let's try one more of these before you try one on your own so we can see that the center is zero zero Again, the center is h comma k, and let's figure out the radius. So let's start at the center and count one, two, three, four. You can count to the left or to the right or down, it doesn't matter. So r is equal to four. So let's write the general form of the equation. I'm just going to write this just so you can see it over and over again. And let's plug in H. H is 0. And let's plug in K. That's 0 also. And R is 4. So we have X squared plus Y squared is equal to 16. So that is the equation of that circle. Now I'm going to give you one more chance to take pictures of these these pages here and I want you to use problem number one and problem number two to help you do problem number three so remember you're going to start by finding the center write the coordinates of the center and then find the radius and then you're going to use the standard form of the equation of a circle and I'm going to write that information for you so find the center write it here find the radius write it here and then I want you to fill in the 
uh, the, 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 the numbers there to find your equation. We're looking for the equation of that circle. When you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. You should be done. So the center is negative 1, 2, 3. Negative 3, 1, 2, well, just 1, 2. That's the center right there. So negative 3, 2. Negative 3, 2. And the radius is 1, 2, 3. So we'll plug in 3 for the radius. And we have x minus negative 3 plus y minus 2. So we have x plus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared is equal to 9. So if you got that one right, excellent. Again, we're starting with some pretty easy problems here. This is this is uh, not that difficult. Now I want you to try number four. We'll do one more of these problems before we move on to parabolas. Try number four. When you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So I'm just going to write the the equation. I'm not going to show a lot of work. I can see that the center is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, negative 1. So that's going to be plus 5 and plus 1. You probably noticed that the, uh, the signs change when you actually plug into the, uh, to the equation. And I can see that the radius of the circle is 1. So 1 squared is 1. So there you go. All right, so if you got that problem correct, good job. All right, so again, this is all you really need to write. If you're used to finding the equation of the circles, you can just do it quickly. Now we're going to move on to parabolas. It says up here, P is a point on the parabola and V is the vertex, just to avoid any possible confusion. But that's pretty obvious just looking at the graph that V is the vertex and P is a point on the graph. Now notice that this is a parabola opening down. So what that means is we're going to have Y minus K is equal to some constant we don't know times X minus H squared. If the parabola is going down then A is going to be negative. If it's going up then A is going to be positive. Now, if this were a parabola opening to the left or to the right, then we'd have to replace y minus k with x minus h, and we'd have to replace x minus h with y minus k. So just be aware of that. I think we're going to do that in the next problem, because you see in the next problem, the parabola actually opens to the right. So I'll just put that equation down there. So, we have a lot of information here. We have a point, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and write these. You don't have to write them if you don't want to, but just to show what's going on here. Our point is 0, 1, and we have the vertex, which is 2, 4. Okay, so now I'm going to make this very clear. I'm going to plug in the y value of the point P here. I'm going to plug in the y value of the vertex here. And I'm going to plug in the x value of the point here. And I'm going to plug in the x value of the vertex here. So just to be absolutely clear, I got that number from there. And I got this number from there. And I got this number from there, and this number from there. So let's make sure we did all that correctly. Everything looks 
right? So plugging in these numbers, we can now find A. That's what we need. So we have negative 3 is equal to 4A, and A is equal to negative 3 fourths. Now that we have that information, we can write the final form of the equation y minus 4, and I got that from the purple, is equal to the a value, which we just found is negative 3 fourths. So maybe I should notate that. I got that from there. Times x minus 2 squared. And I got that number from there. So that is the equation of that parabola. And no, you don't have to use colors. And you don't have to show this step. It's probably good to show this math here. I, I want you to show that math. That's something that you really can't avoid. You have to show how you find found the, the constant, the A value. So let's try one more of these before you try one on your own. Like I said, if a parabola is opening up or down, then the x minus h term is going to be squared. But if a parabola is opening to the right or to the left, the y minus k term is going to be uh, squared. So let's, uh, let's try this next problem. Notice that the green uh, constant here was negative. That's because the parabola is going down. Okay, so first, before we plug in numbers, let's write our point, our coordinates of our point. That point is 2, negative 3. And the vertex is 1, negative 4. Okay, so now we're going to plug in. So the x value of our point is 2. The x value of the vertex is 1. The y value of the point is negative 3. And the y value of the vertex is negative 4. So we have 1 is equal to a times negative 3 plus 4 squared. And that's 1 squared. A is equal to 1. So now we're ready to write the equation. And it is x minus the x value of the vertex is equal to 1 times y minus the y value of the vertex. But that changes it to a positive. And we don't really have a lot of room there to keep writing. And so there you go. Let me find a little more room here. So again, this green value here, that went there. OK, so I want you to get a picture of number 5 and number 6. And you're going to use number 5 and number 6 to help you do uh, number seven. Now notice that the green number here is positive because the parabola is opening to the right. If we were opening to the left, then it would be negative. So now, because the parabola is opening up, your equation is going to be y minus k is equal to a times x minus h squared. If it's opening up or down, then the x minus h is squared and the y minus k is not squared. So try number seven, and when you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. So the point on the parabola is negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the vertex is negative 3, negative 3, 3. And, uh, so the y value of the point is 5, the y value of the vertex is 3, 
the x value of the point is negative 2 and the x value of the vertex is negative 3. So we have 2 is equal to a times negative 2 plus 3 and simplifying that we get a is equal to 2. So um, now we can write the final form of the equation. Uh, y minus 3, y minus the y value of the vertex is equal to a, x minus the x value of the vertex, which makes that positive because it's a negative 3. And uh, there you go. So if you got that answer, excellent. Go ahead and try number eight. When you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. Again, notice that the green number was positive, so the parabola was going up. If it were negative, the parabola would be going down. In this next problem, the equation we're going to use is x minus h is equal to a times y minus k squared because the parabola is opening to the left. Remember, if the parabola is opening to the left or to the right, the y minus k is going to be squared. If it's opening up or down, then the x minus h is going to be squared. So try number 8, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So the point on the parabola is negative 3, 2. And the point on the vertex is negative 2, negative 2 or the, the vertex is negative 2, negative 2, the coordinates. And the x value of our point is negative 3. The x value of the vertex is negative 2. The y value of the point on the curve is 2. The y value of the vertex is negative 2. So we have negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. 2 plus 2 is 4, and so we end up with a is equal to negative 1 over 16. a should be negative because the parabola is opening to the left. It would be positive if it were opening to the right. So now we can write the equation x minus the x value of the vertex equals the a value that we just found times x minus the x value of the vertex. Now again, I'm writing an intermediate step there. You don't have to do that. You can just change the sign. You know the sign is going to change. So if you got that answer, excellent. Okay, so now we're moving on to ellipses. Now again, you should have equations right in front of you on your phone. The picture's on your phone or or written down somewhere so you should know what the standard form of these equations looks like so let's write the the center of the ellipse the center is negative one three it looks like and the standard form of an ellipse is x minus h squared over now if the longest axis is horizontal then a squared is going to go under x minus h if the longest axis of the ellipse is vertical then the a, the a is going to go under y minus k a is always the distance from the center to the to the vertices and the vertices are always on the longest axis. So those two black dots are the vertices. These green dots are not the vertices. They're not really given any special name in the pre-calculus curriculum, generally speaking. So A is always the distance from the center to any one of the vert vertices. So that's going to be 3. So we can plug in 3 for A. 
B is the distance from the center to the uh, to the highest point. It's the half the half the length of the minor axis. A is half the length of the major axis. B is half the length of the minor axis. So that's the special names that we we give those axes. So the length of the minor axis is four divided by two, and we have two. It's half the length. The center is negative one three, so that's going to be positive one. And y minus three. Remember the signs change. And maybe I should go ahead and just write that double negative just so you can see how this works. X minus negative one. Um, okay, so now we can simplify. So x plus one squared over nine plus y minus three squared over four is equal to one, and that is the equation. So notice that the bigger number, the orange is bigger than the yellow. If that's true, if the, the orange number below the x plus one squared is bigger than the yellow number under the y term, then that means that the, uh, the longest axis, the major axis, is horizontal. So let's try another one of these problems. Now the major axis is vertical. This is the longest axis, which means that the vertices are going to be at the top and the bottom. They're not going to be on the sides as you see here. So Um, let's write the standard form of this ellipse. Now I'm going to write y minus a, or excuse me, y minus k squared, and I'm going to put the a squared under that. Now it doesn't really matter what side you put the terms on because of the commutative rule of addition, but I wrote the y minus k term first when we have a vertical ellipse, but it doesn't really matter as long as the a squared is under the y minus k because a is always the distance from the uh, the center to the to the vertices okay so the center and maybe I should write that the center of the ellipse is one two one two well negative 2, negative 2 it looks like. So let's plug in those numbers. y minus negative 2 squared and x minus negative 2 squared and a is 1, 2, 3, 4 so we have 4 squared B is 1, and we can see that just by cutting the, or dividing the major axis by 2, we get A. A is always the distance from the center to the vertices. That's 4. B is always the distance from the center to the side of the ellipse in the case of a vertical ellipse. And so now we can write the final form. We have y plus 2 squared over 16 plus x plus 2 squared over 1. And we don't really have to write over 1. Is equal to 1. And there you go. Okay, so... Notice that the bigger the bigger orange number is now under the y term, whereas the smaller yellow number is under the x term. So when the bigger number is under the y term, that means that your major axis is going to be vertical. These are little details that you must remember in order to have fluency when it comes to graphing conics. I know it's a lot to remember, but the important thing is to be familiar with this information. 
so that you can uh, study this stuff effectively if you need to. Okay, so I want you to take a picture of number 9 and number 10, and that's going to help you with number 11. So go ahead and try number 11. Now, the major axis, if you look at the pink there, that's the major axis. How do I know that? Well, because it's longer than the green minor axis. This is the green minor axis. The pink is longer than the green. So what that means is that the vertices are at these endpoints here. You see those red endpoints? Those are the, ver the vertices. So what this means is that A, which is always the longest uh, or the biggest number in the case of an ellipse. That's not the case when you graph hyperbolas. But with the ellipses, A is always going to be the longest number. A is going to be under the x minus h term. If it were a vertical ellipse, then A would be under the y minus k term. So again, be aware of that. Go ahead and try number 11, and when you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So first I'm going to write the coordinates of the center. It looks like that's 1, 0. Now A is the distance from the center to the vertices. So that's 2, 3, 4, 5. So A is 5. Uh, the x value of the vertex, or the x, x value of the center, that is, is 1. The y value of the center is 0. And B is the distance from the center. Well, it's half the distance of the minor axis. So that would be 4. So now we can simplify. We have x minus 1 squared over 25 plus y squared over 16 is equal to 1. So, so if you got that right, perfect. Go ahead and try number 12. For number 12, notice that the major axis is actually vertical. So what that means is that A is going under the y minus k squared term. And B is going under the x minus h squared term. So I'll go ahead and try number 12. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So we have, well, let's find the center first. So the center is 3, 0, it looks like. Actually, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Looks like it's going to be 1, 2, 3, negative 1. And A is the distance from the center to the, to the vertex, so that's going to be 6. So A is 6. The y value of the vertex, or the y value of the center, is negative 1. B is the distance from the center to the to the side of the ellipse. Again, it's half the distance of the minor axis. This is the minor axis. So that's 2. And we have x minus the x value of the vertex. So let's simplify. We have y plus 1 squared over 36 plus x minus 3 squared over 4 is equal to 1. And there you go. So if you got those right, excellent. So now we're moving on to hyperbolas. Now I could give you a point on the hyperbola, on the green curve, and uh, 
you could solve the problem that way rather than me giving you the box and the center and all that information. But to be honest, that would be kind of tedious and it would kind of distract us from really the main point of this class. So I'm going to give you the box and the asymptotes even though they're not really part of the graph. Only the green part is, is the hyperbola. So just be aware of that. So the center of the hyperbola you can see is negative 1, negative 1. And that's the center of the box. The, uh, the uh, standard form of this hyperbola, it, it opens to the, to the left and to the right, the green part. So what that means is A is going to be under the x minus h squared term, or A squared. Now remember with hyperbolas, the sign in the middle is going to be a subtraction symbol. And again, if the hyperbola opens to the left and to the right, then this x term comes before the negative symbol. So let's plug in h. Now a is the distance from the center to the vertices. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, it looks like. And k is the y value of the center. Uh, did I say this was the vertex? I, that's the center, y value of the center, not the vertex. Now b is the distance from the center to the upper or lower part of the box. So that's 3. So again, as you can see, this looks kind of intimidating, but it's really not. These problems are actually pretty easy. That's the equation of the hyperbola. OK. Let's try another one. I'm going to start by writing the coordinates of the center. So that's 3, negative 2. And now this, this hyperbola opens up and down. So that means the, the uh, uh, a is going to be under the y minus k squared term. And it's going to be in front of the negative symbol. Whereas x minus h squared is going to be under b squared and it's going to come after the negative one the negative symbol <coughs> so the y value of the center is negative two a is the distance from the center to the vertices so that's a one and the x value of the vert of the center is 3 and b is the distance from the center to the side of the box the side that doesn't have the, the vertices so that's also 1 now if this were a plus sign and the equation were the equation of a of an ellipse these two numbers could not be the same because if they were the same then it would just turn into a circle but with a hyperbola a and b can actually be equal not only can a and b be equal but b can actually be bigger than a with an ellipse a is always bigger than b it's just defined that way but with a hyperbola a can actually be smaller than b so, there you go. So this looks difficult, but it's really, not, it's really not hard. I want you to take a picture of 13 and number 14 and use those problems to help you do number 15. Now, this hyperbola opens to the left and to the right, the green part. So whenever you have a hyperbola that opens to the left or to the right, A is going to be under the x minus h squared term and it comes before the negative symbol
and of course we want to write the center, find the center. So try 15, when you come back we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So the center is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So 3, 3. So x minus 3 squared over a squared. a is always the distance from the center to the vertices, so that's 2. The y value of the center is 3. b is always the distance from the center to the side of the box that doesn't have the vertices, so that's 3. Notice in this case that b is actually bigger than a. So let's simplify, and there we go. Uh, whoops, I wrote the wrong number there. That should be 3. So, have you got that one right? Perfect. Okay, now for number 16, the hyperbola opens up and down, the green part opens up and down. So what that means is that you're going to have y minus k squared over a squared. That's going to come before the negative symbol. So you're going to replace this green term with the yellow term. You're going to flip them around. So try number 15. You should have those equations right in front of you. At the beginning of the class we took pictures of the uh, standard form of a hyperbola, an ellipse, and so on and so forth. So you had, have those right in front of you. Try number 16. When you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. So the center is 0, 0. And this is a parabola, or a hyperbola, that opens up and down. So a squared is going to be the first term. I mean, y minus k squared over a squared is the first term that goes before the negative symbol and the y value of the center is 0 a is the distance from the center to the vertices so that's going to be 1 2 3 4 x value of the center is 0 and b is the distance from the center to the part of the box that is not uh, that doesn't contain the vertices so that looks like that's going to be 5. So the final form is y squared over 16 minus x squared over 25 is equal to 1. OK. So we learned how to find the equations of conics given their graphs. And you might think to yourself, well, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to remember all that information. Well, you can have this information right in front of you on your phone, or you can have it written down. And that will be a guide for you. OK, so now we're going to find the equations of conics given various information and we're going to graph the equations and we're going to start with circles so it says find equations of circles with the following characteristics and graph each equation so we're told that the center of the circle is 3 negative 1 so I'm going to plot that there and we have a point on the circle, 0, negative 2. So I guess we can plot that point. And uh, now we're going to write the standard form or general form of the equation of a circle. Textbooks use different names, general form, standard form. doesn't really matter what you call it. So 
we have a point on the circle and the x value of the point is zero so I got that from there the x value of the vertex or excuse me the x value of the center is three so I got that number from there the y value of the point on the circle is negative two I got that from there and the y value of the center is negative one I got that from there and we're going to use this information to help us find the equation of the circle because if we solve this equation we can find r squared so we have negative three squared plus negative one squared is equal to r squared and if we do the math we end up with 10 so the uh, equation is x minus the x value of the center plus y minus the y value of the center so it's a double negative it changes, it changes to positive is equal to r squared but we know r squared is 10 so we didn't actually have to find r to write the equation we just had to find r squared because remember this is the general form of the equation up here and the right side of the equation is r squared not r so to graph the circle we need to find r so we need to square root both sides and the square root of 10 is going to be a little bit bigger than the square root of 9 the square root of 9 is 3 so the square root of 10 is a little bit bigger so let's count up 1 2 3 and a little bit beyond 3 and 1 2 3 down and a little bit beyond and 1 2 3 and a little bit beyond and 1 2 3 so now we can connect the dots and the circle doesn't have to be perfect that was actually a pretty good circle that I did but that was that was just lucky it's hard to draw a perfect circle that's kind of lopsided I guess but it doesn't really matter uh, if your circle is perfect okay so let's try another one of these problems again we were given various information and asked to graph the circle and find its equation so we graphed it and we found its equation so now we're told um, that the center of the circle is on the line y equals three so this is the line y equals three and we're told that the the center is on that line so the center is on the line but we don't know exactly where so we don't know what the x value is of the center but we do know the y value is 3 because it's on that line so it's good to continue to write the standard form of the circle so it'll help us remember we know the radius is one because the problem tells us the radius is one and the y value of a point on the circle is two and the y value of the center is three how do we know that well because again we know the point is on or the center is on that that line so the y value must be three and the x value of the point on the circle is negative five and the x value of the center we actually don't know so that's kind of what we're looking for in this problem okay so we get one one here and then subtract one from both sides we end up with zero then if we square root both sides we get negative five minus h is equal to plus or minus square root zero the square root of zero is just zero and 
plus or minus zero is the same thing. It's just zero regardless of the sign. So if we put h on the other side, we get h is equal to negative 5. So now we have the x value of the center. So we can write the equation. So x minus the x value of the center. So that's a double negative that becomes a positive. And we have y minus the y value of the center is equal to r squared, which is 1. So that is the equation. So now we can graph the, the circle. So the center is negative 5, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. Notice that point is on that line like we said it would be because the problem told us it's on that line. And the radius is 1. So we're going to count out 1 in each direction. And there you go. So there's the graph of the circle. So I want you to get a picture of these problems. Number 17 and 18 will help you do these next problems. So try number 19. You want to write the standard form of the equation of a circle. And you want to plug in these numbers to help you find r. So try number 19. When you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. So the, an x value of, of a point on the circle is 1. The x value of the center is 2. And the y value of the point on the circle is 2 and the y value of the center is 4 and we can use that information to find r squared so we get 1 plus 4 is 5 so r squared is 5 so now we can write the equation so x minus <coughs> x minus the x value of the center plus y minus the y value of the center is equal to r squared, which is 5. So let's plot the point. We have 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the center. And the, uh, the radius is the square root of 5. So if you find the square root in your calculator, the square root of 5, we get 2.2. So 1, 2.2 is about there. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we'll connect the dots. So there's your equation and your uh, graph of the circle. So if you got that one right, excellent. Technically the circle should be going through this point one two, but again, um, your graph doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so try number 20. The center of the circle is on the line x equals negative 3, so be aware that that's a vertical line. That's a vertical line here. So the center of the circle is on that line, which means that we know the x value of the center. We don't know the y value of the center, but we know the x value of the center. So try number 20, and when you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. So. It's good to write the standard form of circle so we can remember it. And this problem, they give us the radius, it's 4. And the y value of the point on the circle is 0. And the y value of the center, we don't know. The x value of the point on the circle is 1 and the x value of the center 
is negative 3 because we know that the center is on this line so the x value of the center must be negative 3 so now we get 4 squared plus negative k squared is equal to 16 subtract 16 from both sides and we get 0 is equal to k squared when you square negative k it just becomes positive positive k squared square root both sides and we get k is equal to plus or minus root 0 which is just 0 so the y value of the center is 0 so now we can write our standard form x minus the x value of the center which is negative 3 so that changes it's double negative plus y minus the y value of the center which we just found is 0 squared is equal to r squared and r is 4 so now we can simplify that a little bit before we write our final form so that is the equation of the circle with those characteristics so let's graph the circle the center is negative 3 0 and the radius is 4 so 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 and 1 2 3 4 so let's connect the dots and there you go so we have our graph and we have the equation so if you got that right, excellent. Okay, so now we're going to move on to parabolas. It says here, find equations of parabolas with the following characteristics and graph each equation. So we're told, let's see, what color should we use? Probably uh, blue. That's the color we've been using for parabolas. The vertex is negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 4, 5. That's the vertex. The focus is negative 3, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 5 up. So what this means is parabola is going to look like this, something like that. So in order to help us graph this, we need to find the equation um, of the vertex. Because it's a parabola opening to the right, we know the parabola is going to be um, x minus h is equal to a times y minus k squared. The y minus k term is squared because the parabola is opening to the right. If it were opening to the left, it would also be y minus k squared. If it were opening down or up, the x minus h term would be squared, or the expression would be squared. So, before we even use that formula, actually, we should use our special formula. p is equal to 1 over 4a. Now, p, again, is the distance from the vertex to the focus so we know that distance is 1 and now we just have to solve for a and uh, if we solve we get 1 fourth so a is 1 fourth and now we can use our equation so I'll write that up here So the x or the, the vertex is um, or the x value of the vertex is negative four. A is one fourth, and the y value of the vertex is five. So we have x plus four is equal to one fourth times y minus 5 squared. So we found the equation of the parabola.
parabola. Now we can use that equation to help us graph the parabola. It's hard to plug in x values and solve. It's much easier to plug in y values. So let's plug in let's plug in y is equal to 4. Actually, let's plug in uh, y is equal to 3. <clears throat> so if we do the math, 3 minus 5 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, 4 times 1 fourth is 1, and then subtract 4 from both sides, we get negative 3. So if y is negative 3, or positive 3, 1, 2, 3, then um, x is negative 3. So 1, 2, 3. So we have a point there. And we can use symmetry to find another point there. And then we can connect the dots. But let's find some more points. So let's plug in let's plug in y equals 1. And I'm choosing values that make things easier for us with the fraction. So if we plug in 1 for y we get 0 for x. So that's another useful point to help us graph. Now let's try plugging in uh, negative 1 for y. If we do that we get uh, 5 for x. So negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have that point there. And now we can probably connect the dots. So we have our parabola. It was kind of cut off at the top there, but we don't have any more room on our on our scale, so that's not really our fault. But technically, if you draw this scale, you probably want to draw a slightly bigger scale. So we don't have to mark the coordinates of the foci, or the, the focus, that is. There's only one focus. But that's the graph. So. Let's try a problem where the vertex or the the, uh, the parabola actually opens up or down. So it says the vertex is at 4, 1. It looks like I already graphed it there, but 1, 2, 3, 4, up 1. And the focus is 4, 1 half, so that would be a little bit below that there. So that tells us that the parabola is going down because the vertex is always inside the parabola. So what that means is our equation is going to be y minus k is equal to a times x minus h squared. The x minus h expression is squared when a problem is opening down. We have to use our special formula. p is equal to 1 over 4a. We can see that p is 1 half because p is always the distance from the focus to the vertex or vice versa. So if we solve this equation, um, we get a is equal to 1 half. Okay, now this parabola is opening down as we said before, so a is going to be negative. So we'll say y minus the y value of the vertex is equal to negative 1 half times x minus the x value of the vertex. So just be aware that if the parabola is opening down or to the left, a is always going to be negative. Um, so now we have our equation of the parabola. Okay, so we can use the equation now. Let's plug in x equals 2. That'll make things easier for us. So we get um, negative 1. So 1, 2, negative 1. And we can use symmetry. Let's plug in 0 for x. And we get negative 7. So that's going to be a point all the way down here. 1, 2, 3, 4 to the symmetry line. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's off this, the, uh, the scale. So we can connect the dots, and that is good enough.
So, I want you to take a picture of number 21 and 22. And I want you to use those problems to do number 23. Uh, now, 23 is going to be a parabola opening up, I believe. Well, actually, it might be opening to the left. Well, we'll see. Plot the coordinates of the vertex and the focus. And uh, you'll see if the, uh, the, the it is opening up or down, or to the left or to the right. If it's opening up or to the right, then A is going to be positive. If it's opening to the left or down, then A is going to be negative. So try number 23. When you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. The vertex is 1, negative 3. That's there. And the focus is 1, negative 2, and 3 fourths. So the focus is very, very close. But the focus is always inside the parabola, so that means the parabola is going up, and A should be positive. Let's use our special formula. P is equal to 1 over 4A. What is P? It's the distance from the vertex to the focus. So P is obviously 1 fourth. And if we solve that equation, we see that A obviously has to be 1. So now we can write the equation. Because the parabola is opening up, the general form of the equation of a parabola with that orientation is like so. The uh, y value of the vertex is negative 3, so that's a double negative. Um, a we just found is 1, and the x value of the vertex is 1. So the final form of the equation is here. So that is the equation of the parabola. So let's plug in 0 for x. If we do that, we get negative 2 for y. So we can use symmetry and plot those points. Let's try plugging in negative 1 for x. And we get 1 for y. Again, we can use symmetry. Let's pl try plugging in negative 2 for x. And we get 6 for y. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we're just plotting some points to help us graph. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, using symmetry. And we're ready to connect the dots. So if you got a graph that looks like that, excellent. So we're not asked to find the coordinates of the focus, and we're not asked to graph the focus either, so you don't have to draw the focus. That's just to help us understand in which way the parabola is opening up. OK, so I want you to try number 24. Now, for number 24, A is going to be negative. Notice in 23, A was positive. But you're going to have to switch A to a negative sign, because in this problem, the parabola is going to be opening to the left. Remember, if a parabola opens to the right or up, then A is positive. If the parabola opens to the left or down, then A is going to be negative. So try number 24. When you come back, we'll do it together. OK, so um, the vertex is 0, 2. Uh, the focus is. Uh, negative 1 8 2 so it's very very close so you can see the parabola is going to be opening this way because the focus is always inside the parabola so let's use our special formula to find a the distance from the vertex to the focus is obviously 1 8 and if we solve that equation we can see that a is obviously going to be 2 so the form of the equation of a parabola opening to the left is going to have the y minus k expression squared. So be aware of that y minus k is squared, not x minus h. In the previous problem, x minus h was squared because the parabola was opening up. But here the parabola is opening to the left, so y minus k is squared. 
we have x minus the x value of the vertex is equal to a. Now, here we said a is 2, but we have to change it to negative 2 because the parabola is opening to the left. So just be aware of that. I know that's kind of confusing. The y value of the vertex is 2. And so there you go. So now we have x is equal to negative 2 y minus 2 squared. And we can use that to graph the, uh, the equation. So let's try plugging in negative 1 for, x, for y. It's easier to plug in y rather than x in this situation. So let's plug in negative 1. And we get negative 18. So let's plug in something. Uh, let's plug in something smaller. Um, actually, positive one. I meant to plug in positive one. Let's pl we'll plug in positive one for y, and then we get negative two for x. So we can use symmetry. Let's plug in uh, zero for y, and then we get negative eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's pretty far out there. But that's uh, that's good enough for our graph. And be sure to rectangle your equation because that's part of the answer. So if you got those right, good. So now let's uh, let's do this next problem together. So here we're given the vertex of a parabola and the directrix. Directrix is y is equal to negative two. So the directrix is something that we didn't cover in the previous class, but you probably remember from my intermediate algebra course what the directrix is. The directrix tells you. Uh, or gives you information about the parabola. Um, the vertex is 0, negative 1, and 15 sixteenths. So that would be about there. That's the vertex. So what this means is that the parabola is opening this way because the directrix is always behind the parabola. We can also use our formula. P is equal to 1 over 4a. Now P is the distance from the vertex to the focus. But it's also very important to remember that P is also the distance from the vertex to the directrix if you go in the opposite direction. So again, the parabola is going to look like this. The, the focus is going to be somewhere in here, and the directrix is going to be behind. But the directrix and the focus are the same distance from the vertex. So if you look at this here, we see the distance from the vertex to the directrix is 1 over 16. So we can see that a is obviously going to be equal to 4. Um, the directrix tells us that the parabola is uh, opening up uh, in relation, to the, the directrix in relation to the vertex tells us that. So x minus h is going to be squared in the equation. So we have y minus the y value. y minus the y value of the vertex is equal to um, a, which is going to be positive in this case. We found a previously, and x minus the x value of the vertex. So y plus 1 and 15 sixteenths is equal to 4 times x squared. Usually we don't use mixed numbers in algebra. But uh, when you're graphing, it's, it's useful to write your numbers as mixed numbers because it makes it easier for us to understand the values. So let's plug in 1 for x. If you plug in 1 for x, we get negative 2 and 1 16th. Um, actually, I'm sorry, positive 2 and 1 16th. 
So that's about there. We can use uh, symmetry. And if we plug in 2 for x, that's going to be a number that's way outside the, the scale for our graph. So we can just connect the dots. And there we go. So those were problems where we were given the directrix. Well, that was one problem where we were given the directrix and the vertex. Now we're given the focus and the directrix. So let's try this problem. 2 and negative 3 is here. That's the focus. And the directrix is x is equal to 0. So that's actually a line that's on the y-axis. So what this tells us is that the, ver the vertex must be right in between. The vertex is always directly in between the, uh, the, 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 the vertex is always directly between the, the directrix and the focus. So this means that our parabola is going to be opening to the right. So we have to use our special f uh, formula to find A. P, you can see, is the distance from this vertex to the focus, which is 1. That's also the distance from the ver vertex to the directrix. And A is obviously equal to 1 fourth. So this parabola is opening to the right. So that means that Y minus K is going to be squared in our equation. So the x value of the, of the vertex is, well, we don't know. What is the vertex? Well, the vertex is this point here, which is 1, negative 3. So 1, a is 1 fourth. We found that. And then the y value of the vertex is negative 3. So that becomes positive 3 squared. So that is the equation of the parabola. Let's plug in a y value to help us graph this. So let's try plugging in. Um, let's try plugging in negative one for y. That number makes it easier for us, and we get two for x. So we can use symmetry. Now let's try plugging in uh, negative two for y. Um, actually, let's try, we want to choose numbers that make things easy, but it doesn't look like there's a lot of easy numbers. So we can plug in negative 2 for y, then we get 1 and 1 fourth for x. So that'll be about there. That doesn't really help us graph much. Let's try 0. Um, 0 for y and then we get 13 fourths which is 3 and 1 fourth for x so that will be about there again we can use symmetry let's try plugging in uh, 1 for y then we get 5 for x so up 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and at that point, I think we can connect the dots. We have enough of the graph to help us get a pretty good drawing. OK, so I want you to take a picture of number 25 and 26. And I want you to do um, number 27. When you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So the vertex vertex is at negative 4, 2, which is there. And the directrix is here, a vertical line. And that means that P, the distance from the vertex to the focus, which is also the distance from the vertex to the directrix, is two units. So let's use our special formula. P is equal to two. And if we solve, we see that A is equal to one eighth. 
So now let's write our formula. And the directrix tells us that our parabola is going to look something like uh, something like this. So it's a parabola opening to the left. So we have x minus h is equal to uh, negative one eighth. We have to change the sign to negative because we know that the parabola is opening to the left. And then we have y minus k. But let's write a first because we're just writing the formula. So we have x minus the x value of the vertex is equal to negative 1 8 times y minus the y value of the vertex. And so we have x plus 4 is equal to negative 1 8 times y minus 2 squared. That's the equation. And now we can use the equation to help us graph the parabola. Let's plug in um, let's plug in negative 2 for y. Then we get negative 6 for x. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we can use symmetry 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So now let's try plugging in uh, 10 for y. And we get negative 12 for x. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we can use symmetry 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So now we can connect the dots. And there we have our parabola. So if you got that one right, good job. Uh, go ahead and try number 28. When you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So the focus is at negative 2, negative 5. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the directrix is at uh, y equals negative 4 and 1 half. So that would be here. And let me move that move that directrix up a tiny bit. So everything looks right. And so what that means is the parabola is going to look something like like this. But we have to find the equation. Now we have the focus and the directrix. P is going to be half that distance from the uh, directrix to the focus. So the direct distance from the directrix uh, to the focus is about one half. So remember the, the distance from the vertex, which is in between the two, the distance from the vertex to the focus is P. The distance from the uh, vertex to the directrix is also P. So that's going to be one half of, of one half, which is one fourth. So P is one fourth. And we can see obviously A would have to be one. Now we need to write the coordinates of the vertex. The vertex, as I said, is going to be here. And that's going to be negative two, negative four, and three fourths. So negative two, 
negative four and three fourths. So this is a parabola opening down. So we're going to use this equation where x minus h is squared. Because it's opening down, a is going to be negative one, not positive one. And let's go ahead and plug in the y value of the vertex. That is negative four and three fourths. And the x value of the vertex. So that is the equation. And we can use that equation to help us graph the parabola. So let's plug in um, let's plug in negative 1 for x. And if we plug in negative 1 for x, we get negative 5 and 3 fourths. So 1 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 3 fourths would be about there. And we can use symmetry. And our parabola is going to look something like that. But don't don't get confused and make your parabola go through the focus. The focus is below the, the vertex. So if you got that right, good job. Okay, so now we're going to move on to ellipses. It says find equations of ellipses with the following characteristics and graph each equation. So we have a focus at 5, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1. And a focus at negative 1, 1. So those are foci of the ellipse. And what that means is our ellipse is going to be uh, horizontal. And the midpoint between those is going to be the center. So we know that's the center. And it says the length of the major axis is 8. So the foci are always on the major axis. So 1, 2, 3, 4 is half the, the length of the major axis. And 1, 2, 3, 4 is the, is the other half. So these endpoints out here are the vertices. So this gives us a lot of information. Remember, we have our formula. a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. It looks like the Pythagorean, but it doesn't, it's not quite the Pythagorean because c is in the wrong place. And we have a, the distance from the center to the vertices, so that's 4. And we have c, the distance from the center to the foci, that's, that's 3. And so if we do the math, we see that b is equal to 16 minus 9, which is uh, 7 and square root, we get square root 7. So now we have everything that we need to write the equation. So this is a para uh, an ellipse where the major axis is horizontal. So a squared is going to be under x minus h squared. With ellipses, a is always bigger than b. That's not the case with hyperbolas, which we're going to do next. But with ellipses, a is always bigger than b. Because a is uh, the hypotenuse of that triangle we drew in the previous class. So uh, we know the center, the x value of the center is 2. We know a is 4. We know the y value of the center is 1. And b, we know, is root 7. So we have everything that we need to write the final form of the equation of the ellipse. And there you go. Now, b is root 7. And root 7 
is somewhere between 2 and 3. You can use your calculator. Don't be afraid to use your calculator. That's going to be 2.64. So let's count up from the center 2.64 and down 12.6 and then we'll connect the dots. And there you go. So let's go on to uh, the next problem. So now we have vertices at 0, 06 and 00. zero. So obviously the major axis is going to be vertical. And the length of the minor axis is 4. So half the distance would be this length here and half the distance would be this length. So now we have all we need to draw the ellipse. So we have B and we have A. We know the center has to be here. Obviously it's the midpoint between the vertices. So we can just go ahead and write the equation. Now a squared is going to go below y minus k squared. Because uh, the major axis is vertical. And the center, or the y value of the center, is 3. And a is the distance from the center to the to the vertices, so that would be 3. And B is the distance from the center to the outer part of the ellipse uh, along the uh, minor axis, so that's going to be 2. The x value of the center is 0. Again, just so there's no doubt, the center is that green point there, 0, 3. So, let's simplify. We have y minus 3 squared over 9 plus x squared over 4 is equal to 1. So that's the equation and that's the graph. Alright, so I want you to get a picture of these problems and I want you to use 29 and 30 to do number 31. And try number 31. When you come back we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So we have a focus at 3, negative 5. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's a focus there. And 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's a focus there. And it says the length of the major axis is 14. So the foci are here, so the major axis is going to be vertical. So we start from the center, which looks like the center is going to be here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to go out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Why 7? Well, because that's half of, of 14. And we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 down, because that's half of 14. So when you when you find the total length of the green major axis, it should be 14. So, we can use our equation a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. That's just an equation we need to remember. Um, a is going to be 7. That's always the distance from the center to the, the each vertex. B, we don't know, but C is the distance from the center to the foci, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So B, if we solve that, B is equal to 49 minus 25, which is 24. Uh, square root of 24, that is. So B is equal to 2 root 6. So now that we have B, we can uh, 
we can draw the rest of the ellipse. Um, let's estimate root 24. Well, root 25 is 5, so root 24 is a little bit less than 5. So we're going to start at the center and we're going to count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but a little bit less. And 1, 2, 3, and it looks like we don't have enough room, so let me get uh, a different uh, grid. Okay, so let's count out 1, 2, 3, 4, and almost a 5. And 1, 2, 3, 4, and almost a 5. And then we'll uh, connect the dots. So again, my ellipse doesn't look perfect. It looks kind of weird, but again, we don't really care. It's the main point that we're trying to get here. So now let's draw the uh, standard form of the equation of ellipse. Now the y minus k squared term is going to have a squared below it because this is a vertically orientated ellipse. Now the center of the ellipse is, let's choose green here to notate the center of the ellipse. So we have y minus 0 squared over a. a is the distance from the center to the vertices, so that's going to be 7. And we have x minus the x value of the center, which is 1, 2, 3. And b is, the, is uh, root 24. Or you can write it as root 20, or, uh, 2 root 6. It doesn't really matter. It's probably easier to write it as root 24 right now. So now we have y squared over 49 plus x minus 3 squared over 24 is equal to 1. So we have the ellipse graphed and we have the equation. So if you got that answer, excellent. Go ahead and try number 32 and when you come back we'll do it together. Okay, we're back so let's graph the vertices. We've got negative 4, 0, and we've got 0, 0, and the length of the minor axis is 2, so that means we go up 1 and down 1. The length of the minor axis is this distance here, and that's enough really to graph the ellipse. We have the graph pretty quickly there. Notice this is a horizontally orientated ellipse, so a squared is going to be under the x minus h squared term. So the center is, uh, is obviously negative 2, so it's going to be positive 2. a is the distance from the center to the vertices, which is 2 b is the distance from the uh, center to, well it's half the distance to the minor axis, that's one way to describe it. The y value of the uh, center is 0. And so we have x plus 2 squared over 4 plus y squared over 1, so we can just say y squared and that's equal to 1. So if you got that equation, excellent. So it just so happened that in both these equations the y value of the center was 0. Okay, so let's go on and do some slightly different problems here. We're still doing ellipses, but in this problem we're given the center, 1, 2 and one vertex, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. 
So to help us keep track, I'm going to write a V and a C. And we also have the point 1, 3. So 1, 3 is right above that point there. So we have P for point, C for center, V for vertex. So um, we can we can see that um, A is uh, A is three, and B is one. So we can just write the the equation immediately. And this is going to be a horizontally orientated ellipse. So the a squared term goes above the or below the x minus h squared. The center, we're given the center, x minus 1 and y minus 2. And a is 3. That's the distance from the center to the vertex. And uh, b is 1. So pretty easy to do this problem. y minus 2 squared equals 1. So we have the equation. And 1, 2, 3. We can draw the rest of the graph because it's uh, the uh, ellipse is symmetric. And here we go. Again, the, your picture doesn't have to be perfect. My ellipse is not perfect by any means, but I just want to say again, we don't really care if it's a perfect graph. That's not the point of this. Okay, so that was kind of a different problem because we were given the center. And 34 is also a slightly different problem. We're given the uh, vertices and a focus. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 7. All right, so those are our vertices. And we're given a focus at 4, 6. So I'm going to write F and V and V, just so I can keep track. So obviously, based on our knowledge of you know foci and vertices and ellipses, we know that the other vertex um, or the other focus is going to be here. I don't know if we really, I guess we don't really need that. Um, I'm going to make the center green. The center has to be that green dot because that's exactly three from one vertex and three from another vertex vertically. Um, so we have A, we just need to find B. So we're going to have to use that equation. a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. We have a, which is 3. And we have c. c is the distance from the center to the focus, so that's 2. So b is going to end up being uh, root 5. So x minus h squared. Uh, this is going to be a vertical, vertical ellipse it looks like. So a squared is going to be under the y minus k squared term. And so the center is 1, 2, 3, the center is 4, 4, 4. So y minus 4 and x minus 4 and uh, a is 3 and b uh, is root 5. We found that over here. So then we have y minus 4 squared over 9 plus x minus 4 squared over 5 is equal to 1. 
and there you go so now we found B I can't forget to graph it so root 4 mm -hmm. is 2 so root 5 is going to be a little bit bigger than 2 so I don't really need to be that precise now we have the overall shape of the of the ellipse I'm going to draw it and there you go so we have the graph and we can erase the center and the focus we don't need those we have the graph and we have the equation so I want you to take pictures of 33 and 34 and I want you to use those to do problem 35 and uh, when you come when you come back we'll do it together okay so the center is 1 2 and the focus is 1 4 and we have a point 2 2 and our equation is a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared c is the distance from the center to the focus so that's 2 and b is the distance from the center to the side of the ellipse in this case well it's half the distance of the minor axis which is 1 so we can see that a is equal to the square root of 5 so don't be afraid to use your calculator the square root of 5 is uh, 2.23 so we're going to count up 1 2.23 and down 1 2.23 and we can see what the ellipse looks like and this is a uh, a vertical ellipse so y minus k is going to have a squared below it and a is uh, root 5 and the y value of the center is 2 and the x value of the vertex is 1 so we have y minus 2 squared over 5 plus x minus 1 squared is equal to 1. Go ahead and try number 36 and when you come back we'll do it together. Okay we're back. So here's the center and the vertex is uh, here and there's a focus here <clears throat> so that means um, that there's a vertex one two three four five units to the left and a focus here although we don't really have to graph the foci so our equation is a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared we know a is the distance from the center to the vertices so that's 5 and we know c is the distance from the center to the foci so that is 2 so solving for b we get the square root of 21 and now this is a horizontal ellipse so we're going to write the a squared term under the x minus h squared term for the a squared uh, expression the 
x value of the center is 2. a is the distance from the center to the vertices, so that's 5. The y value of the center is negative 2. And the distance from, uh, well, b we know is root 21. So the final form of the equation is x minus 2 squared over 25 plus y plus 2 squared over 21 is equal to 1. <clears throat> and the square root of 21 is 4.58, so 2, 3, 4.58 up, we count up from the center. And count down from the center, 1, 2, 3, 4.58. And we can connect the dots. And we don't need the foci, so you can erase the foci. And you don't really need the center either, but we can just keep it there for reference. So it's kind of a lopsided ellipse, but again, we don't really care if it's perfect, as long as it looks somewhat like an ellipse. So if you got that one right, excellent. Okay, so now we're going to move to hyperbolas. It says find equations of hyperbolas with the following characteristics and graph each equation. So the center is 1, 4, and the focus is negative 2, 4, and there's a vertex at 0, 4. <clears throat> so this gives us important information. Now, the equation that we're going to use for hyperbolas actually looks exactly like the Pythagorean, unlike with ellipses. So it's really easy to get confused, so I would suggest writing a C for center and a V for vertex and an F for focus so we don't uh, confuse ourselves. So A is always the distance from the center to the vertex, so A is actually going to be 1. C is always the distance from the center to the foci, so that's going to be 1, 2, 3. And if we solve for B, we get root 8, which can also be written as 2 root 2. So now we're ready to write the equation. This is a, uh, a hyperbola opening to the left and to the right, so x minus h squared over a squared is going to go first. And the center is 1, 4. So we're going to make sure we have our mm -hmm. 1 and 4 there. And A is the distance from the center to the vertex, which we found is 1. And B we found is root 8. So we have x minus 1 squared minus y minus 4 squared over 8 is equal to 1. So there's the equation. Let's... Uh, Let's graph, so the square root of 8 is going to be a little bit less than, than 3. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 8 is a little less than 3. And then down 1, 2, a little less than 3. And so we can erase those letters and connect the dots. And then we'll draw.
draw the asymptotes. draw the hyperbola so it's going to look something like like this and we can erase the foci or the focus we don't need that so if you got that one right good job okay let's try one more of these before you try one on your own so the center is negative 3, negative 2, and the focus is negative 3, negative 6, which is down here, and we have a vertex at negative 3, 0, so again, I recommend using letters so we don't confuse ourselves, and uh, I think we're ready to use our equation, so our equation is the Pythagorean theorem. A is the distance from the center to the vertex, which is 2. And C is the distance from the center to the focus, which is 4. So B is equal to the square root of 12, or you could say 2 root 3. So the square root of 12, if we use a calculator, we see that that's 3.46 so we're going to move to the right 3.46 which is about there and to the left 1 2 3.46 which is about there and we know there's another vertex here and those are going to be the boundaries of our box And so now we can draw the asymptotes. And this uh, hyperbola opens up and down. And I should probably continue that that uh, asymptote at the bottom left a little bit there, if I can make it straight. All right, let's draw the equation. Because it opens up and down, y minus k squared is going to be first, and a is going to be under y minus k squared. And the y value of the center is negative 2. And a is the distance from the center to the vertex, which is 2. The x value of the center is negative 3. And B is root 12. So if we simplify, we get 1 or y plus 2 squared over 4 minus x plus 3 squared over 12 is equal to 1. So I want you to get a picture, get a picture of 37 and 38, and I want you to try 39. 
go into attempt number 39. When you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So, we have foci at negative 3, 3, and negative 7, 3, and a vertex at negative 6, 3. So we have a focus, and we have a vertex, and we have uh, another focus here. So the center is the point in between the foci, so the center is the green. And we're going to have another ver uh, vertex here. So it's good to write the letters just so we know what we found, because it can get kind of confusing sometimes. So now we can write our formula a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. a is 1, b we don't know, c is the distance from the center to the foci, which is 2. So a is the distance from the center to the vertices. So b is equal to root 3. And so now we can draw our hyperbola. So root 3 is approximately uh, 1.7. So we're going to go up 1.7 and down 1.7. And then we can make our box. And we can erase the foci. We don't really need those. It's not part of the graph. And then we'll draw our asymptotes. And the vertices are here. So we know that uh, this is going to be a hyperbola opening to the left and to the right. It looks roughly like that. So now we can write the equation of the hyperbola. And this hyperbola opens to the left and to the right, which means that the x minus h squared term is going to come first, and then the y minus k squared term. And a is always under x minus h squared if the if the hyperbola opens to the left and to the right, and uh, the the uh, center of the hyperbola is one two three four five one two three so negative five three so negative five. 3 and a is a <coughs> excuse me a is a distance from the a is the distance from the center to the vertices so that's going to be 1 and b is a distance from the center to the top of the box or the bottom of the box and we found that that is root 3 so sorry that's a little messy there my writing but uh, if we simplify we get x plus 5 squared minus y minus 3 squared over 3 is equal to 1 and there's our equation so if you got that one right excellent okay go ahead and try number 40 and when you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So we have a focus at negative 4, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. And we have vertices at negative 4, 4. 
and negative 4, 2. So these are the vertices. Um, let's double check that, make sure everything's right. It's easy to get confused with these problems. So that means we should have a focus up here. We don't really need to graph that though. But we know uh, some of these values now. So we can use our equation. A is the distance from the center of the hyperbola, which is obviously there, to the vertices. So that's going to be 1. And C is the distance from the center to the foci, which is 1, 2, 3. So that's going to be 3. So if we solve for B, we have the square root of 8, which is equal to 2 root 2. So the square root of 8 is going to be a little less than 3, because we know the square root of 9 is 3. So the square root of 8 is a little less than 3, so 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2, a little less than 3. Not 3, but a little less than 3. And so now we can draw our box. Looks something like this. Now don't get confused, those other points are, are the foci. And we can now draw our asymptote lines. And um, we can see, obviously, that the parabolas open up. So here's one parabola. And here's the other parabola. And obviously, it would be beneficial for the graph to be adjusted to scale. But we can see the graph now. And so let's write the equation. So this, this hyperbola opens up and down. So the y minus k squared term is going to come first. And then the x minus h squared term. And we can see that the center is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. So negative 4, 3. So negative 4, 3. And A is the distance from the center to the vertices, which is 1. And B is the distance from the center to the side of the, of the box at the right or the left, so that's going to be root 8. You can write it however you want to. It's more convenient to write it as root 8 right now. And so then we get x plus 4 squared over 8 is equal to 1, and there you go. So that is the equation of that graph. So if you got that right, perfect. Good job. So I don't think we're going to have time to do 41 and 42, but that's okay. Okay, so that was the class today. If you want to take screenshots of all the work that we did to help you with your homework, go ahead and do that now. Screenshot number one and number two, number three and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12, but don't go before you get your homework.
Let's take a look at the homework. Here's screenshot number one. And number two. Number three. And four. And five, but don't go before you get the answers. Remember, it's not enough to attempt the homework. You must get the right answers. So here's the answers for numbers 1 through 14. And here's the answers for number uh, 15 through 20. So get that homework done. And I look forward to seeing you in the next class.